And welcome to this special edition of Hannity. This is a Fox News alert. Donald Trump officially endorsed Speaker Paul Ryan at a rally in Wisconsin just a short while ago. He also endorsed Senator John McCain and Senator Kelly Ayotte. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee. In tonight for Sean. And here's what Trump said earlier while campaigning in the Badger State with his running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence. In our shared mission to make America great again, I support and endorse our Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. And while I'm at it, I hold in the highest esteem Senator John McCain for his service to our country in uniform and in public office. And I fully support and endorse his reelection. I also fully support and endorse Senator Kelly Ayotte of New Hampshire. All right, joining us right now with reaction is Washington Times columnist Charles Hurt, former Clinton pollster and Fox News contributor Doug Schoen, and Trump campaign pollster and advisor Kelly Ann Conway. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Okay, so the, the big announcement tonight. He's now in with Ryan, with McCain, with Ayotte. And Doug, I think he actually endorsed you, but we just didn't have time to play the tape. I, I, I would welcome it. And, you know, <laughs> Donald Trump did what he had to do, Governor, at a time when his poll numbers are sink, sinking. He is behind by four points in Georgia, behind in three other swing states substantially. The national polls have been sinking. He made the right decision. The question is why this took so long and how many more flip-flops they'll be. All right, Kelly, you know, I, last week, my inbox was getting filled up every day with people saying, what's Trump doing? Why is he not on the attack to Hillary? He's <laughs> off on these other tangents. And tonight, after that speech, as people were watching, those same people were blowing up my inbox saying, That's right. this is the Donald Trump we want to see. And they're all happy. So was this a turning point for the Trump campaign moving forward? Uh, yes, Governor, I believe it was. I actually think you'll look back at today as a really great day for Trump Pence and a terrible day for Hillary Clinton, who now is lying about lying. Uh, she still can't get the story right. And I think when you look at go beyond the endorsements tonight and you listen to what both Mr. Trump and Governor Pence had to say on the stump, they're taking the case right to Hillary, if not Obama's eight years in office. Donald Trump's out there tonight questioning her temperament, her fitness for office, her qualifications. Last I checked, integrity is a qualification for President of the United States. And I think people who were on the ledge this week are now going to get off the ledge. And this is a man who is doing what he needs to do to win now, which is get back in that fighting form and have tunnel vision. There's a boogie woman out there. It's very clear who to attack every single day. And, and I don't think she's going to, it's not going to wear well in her. Hillary benefited this week, Governor, from scarcity, from not being part of the conversation. That's when she does best. But she doesn't wear well. The minute she got back on the stump today, she started lying about lying. Well, I, I think that's, you know, kind of what that whole thing was about. But what we saw tonight was uh, Donald Trump, you know, taking the high road when it comes to his own party. But he didn't stop being Donald Trump. And, and Charles, you know, when I uh, listened to this speech, uh, you know, he went right after Hillary, went on the attack. Uh, I mean, nobody expects him to be anybody other than Donald Trump, do they? No, and, and of course he was very charming in the way he talked about how uh, he was going to have to stay on message tonight, and he, and he was too, reading portions of his speech, uh, and all that was great. But you know, one of the things that I think that uh, has largely been missed by the media this week is uh, when when he when he started taking on water at the beginning of the week, it had nothing to do with Paul Ryan. The only people who were upset about what he said about Paul Ryan, which by the way was hilarious, the only people who were upset about that was Paul Ryan and a bunch of uh, you know. Politicos inside the Beltway. Nobody cares about that. What Donald Trump was in trouble for at the beginning of the week was that unnecessary, ridiculous spat with the Khan family. And what, what I think we have seen is once again we've seen another media Houdini act by Trump, where he throws out the thing with uh, with Paul Ryan at, at the very at the very zenith of the of the Khan controversy, 
and it completely changes the subject from the con controversy to this new non-controversy that nobody cares about, and it all winds up with the, the, a wonderful speech tonight in which he exhibited party unity. Nobody cares about that, really, but it, we're, we're not talking about the con thing now. We're talking about uh, uh, you know, uh, Trump's support for John McCain, Kelly Ayotte, and, and uh, Paul Ryan. And, and, and by the way, he also got in all of his shots on uh, you know, the queen of corruption and, uh, and stuff like that. And I, so I think going forward, if, if he does remain laser focused uh, as, he, as he should, you know, this is a, today was a victory for him. Well, and on Monday, he's going to be unveiling a great economic plan, yeah. Governor. I'm sure you're, everyone's aware of that, the Detroit Economic Club. It's, it's really a great plan that will help the middle class who are struggling. And I think that's an important segue here, too, also, because I think the inside baseball of the past week has also distracted us from talking about what the voters want to talk about, which is issues. People in this country are struggling, and people are nervous, and they feel unsafe and not prosperous. And I think uh, the specific plans, I, I was with um, Governor Pence yesterday in North Carolina and Virginia. He's out on the stump talking about substance, taking the case right to Hillary Clinton for the failures of Obamacare, Governor, which he also reminded us was really just the prologue to Hillary Care that she tried to. So you've got 16 of the 23 co-ops already failing. You've got millions of uninsured Americans who weren't supposed to be in this place. You've got to now pivot to the substance as well because their Hillary simply cannot compete. And what? Kelly, I'm pretty sure that we're not going to uh, hear Donald Trump go to, to Detroit on Monday and propose another one and a half trillion dollars yeah. in taxes over the next 10 years. <laughs> and, and Charlie, I, I want to go to you because uh, or, or Governor, please just please. respond to you. You made a point I think is very important, and that is that this whole thing about Paul Ryan, I think Donald Trump was just tweaking his nose a little bit because he used the exact same language on Paul Ryan that Paul Ryan had yeah. used on him about, I want to get there, but I'm just not there yet. I thought the whole thing was more <laughs> funny. Now, I think some of the other things this week, you know, weren't the best uh, of all, but t he turned the corner. Sure. I want to yeah, listen sure. to but a see, little bit of the speech. But that's from the difference between you and the media. Yeah, yeah, is that you? You have a sense of humor, but, and nobody in the media has a sense look, of humor. I, I got well, a sense they, of humor they don't too. Have a, but they if have Donald no Trump's sense of humor when it comes 70 to Republicans, of the Republican votes, he's in a crisis <laughs> in his campaign. Oh, they'll which is be what's back. Happening. He's like a yo-yo dieter with Republicans. Dog, he goes up, he goes down. They're not going for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> well, they'll be back. You know, uh, uh, All right. So far, the polls are just going one way, Kelly, and down. We'll All talk right, next let's, week. Let's <laughs> listen to this. This is a little clip from the speech tonight in Green Bay. He clearly is indicating that he's not going to be so sweet and loving and syrupy mm -hmm. when it comes to Hillary Clinton. Let's listen, get, then get, get some reaction. In one way, she's a monster. Okay? Look at what happened. Look at her history. In another way, she's a weak person. She's actually not strong enough to be president. She's going to be the tough one, you see? She's going to be the tough one. She's going to play with nuclear weapons. You know, they have all nukes, nice new. She's going to be the tough one. Now, here's the problem with a Hillary, Hillary Rotten Clinton. Here's the problem. Here is, that's why she changed her list. That's why she doesn't want to use the name anymore. Because everybody was saying that. The debates are going to be absolutely fantastic. I think we can get rid of the national debt by making it pay-per-view and letting people across the country That's just great. buy in to be able to watch it. All right, let me start with you, Doug. Hillary Clinton's going to be the target. If he stays on Hillary and doesn't go out and beat up the fans in the arena, do you think Donald Trump <laughs> is going to end up getting his mojo back? Well, he certainly can. I agree with that. But the, the one thing, again, we haven't talked about is the Clintons are going to have $2 billion to bring to bear. And Kellyanne, maybe I'm wrong, but so far there really haven't been any appreciable media buys by Donald Trump or his super PACs, I think getting outspent four, five, six to one. And if that happens, given the lead that the Secretary of State has in the swing states, yes, he can get his mojo back, but without unanimous Republican support, given the weakness with minorities, it's going to be a tough but not impossible race for Donald Trump. But, but I have to push back on that a little bit, Doug, because well, first of all, we released an ad tonight, and it's terrific. I would commend everybody just to go to our website, DonaldTrump.com, or, or pick up the ad. And it takes the case to Hillary Clinton, Governor, to your point. It, it goes back and it shows all the montage of everybody calling her reckless and crooked and putting her personal interest 
before our national security interests, a fact that will not change between now and November, and a fact that we really can't emphasize enough. Um, secondly, Doug, I will have to say that this is a very unconventional candidate and a very unconventional way of campaigning, yet with Hillary, everything's out in the open. We know she's going to spend money. Kellyanne, I've got we, to interrupt. Yeah, we are ahead. in a hard break here. I want to thank all of you, thank Charlie, you. Doug, and uh, thank you, Governor. also uh, Kellyanne. And thank we're you. all looking forward to that speech on Monday. It ought to be a barn burner stem winder.